start the recitation. Okay, so you think you will start the recitation? Uh, it's currently recording. Mm -hmm. So we will start the recitation with problems in section 4.1. The first problem we will solve is number nine. Here we are asked to prove the statement. There is a perfect square that can be written as a sum of two other perfect squares. We are also given the definition of perfect square. In, an integer n is called a perfect square if and only if n equals to k squared for some integer k. So according to this definition, 1, 4, and 9 are, per, are perfect squares. If we go on, uh, 4 squared is 16 and 5 squared is 25. So we can find an example to prove this, prove this statement. Since 9, 16, and 25 are perfect squares, and 25 is equal to the sum of 9 and 16, 25 is a perfect square that can be written as a sum of two other perfect squares. So we have found an example and proved the statement. Any questions? So just one uh, um, thing that so after you show that, yes, you gave an example and you prove, prove that uh, existential statement, conclude with maybe another slide, because you see, don't see the original statement. Oh. So conclude with a, a slide that actually this is, this proves the original statement. So either that you prove, this is kind of for the future, either that you prove the entire, entire thing uh, in notepad and then you can actually see the top or put it in one slide. So you see, this is what I wanted to prove and this is how I did it and reached the conclusion. So everything is visible within one page. Okay, I will add the statement here. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next, we will solve problem 33 in section 4.1. This problem asks us to prove that if n is any even integer, then negative 1 to the nth power is equal to 1. Since n is an even integer, it can be written as 2 times k. Then we can substitute n by 2k, and we can separate the exponents. The original expression now equals to 1 to the kth power, which is equal to 1, because 1 to any power equals 1. Here we used a direct proof to show the statement is true for all values. Any questions? OK. Next, we will look at problem 54 in section 4.1. For this problem, we need to determine whether the statement is true or false and justify our answer with a proof or counterexample. The statement is, for all, for all integers, this expression is a perfect square. Uh, we record the definition of perfect square. An integer n is called a perfect square if and only if n is equal to k square for some integer k. And this statement is true. And here is the proof. Suppose n is any integer. Uh, first, we use the distributive property to remove the parentheses. After combining like terms, we get n squared plus 4n plus 4. This is a perfect square trinomial, and it can be written as n plus 2 squared. So again, to come back to uh, Salem's question earlier is, how do you see that n squared plus 4n plus 4 is a perfect square and is actually the product of n plus 2 uh, to the power 2? You basically have, have to rely on experience because uh, you have to somehow see the fact that before you must have solved n plus 2 multiply with n plus 2, to see that this number n squared plus 4 n plus 4 is the result of that perfect square. So you have to exercise, you have to practice all of those problems that I put in the homework. And really, we will be very uh, lax at grading the homework. So 
we will give full credit for showing that you have tried every single problem. It's more important to try, even if you don't get to the final result, because you actually exercise by doing that. So yes, attempt every problem. I put a lot of problems in the homework because it's the summer session and it's supposed that you are solving all of these, uh, all that needed to be solved in two weeks of a normal semester, but try every problem. It's not about doing it, like uh, making sure that you actually reach the result, but trying it because that actually gives you already a lot of uh, experience. And one thing that you may have noticed is that all of the bold exercises from the textbook are solved at the end of the textbook. And you do have access to the textbook now because uh, it was posted in uh, uh, one of the Piazza uh, Commons. So basically look at the, at the solutions, look, open in parallel the problems and their solutions and look at the problem, look how it was solved. And that actually gives you uh, how do you solve the other problems. Also, you may have noticed that I didn't choose problems that are already solved in the uh, homework. They are th the problems that you have to look at the previous problems to those that are that are asked in the homework to see how to solve them. They rely on how we do it in class, but they are much more exercises than uh, the probably the dozen ones that we do in class. Okay, thank you, Juting. So I see that you solved this problem too. Yes, uh, that's all for section 4.1. Okay. Uh, and, and question, um, yeah, okay. So Vasuda, we do the same. So Juting you, you already uh, disabled her presentation. Yeah. Vasuda, I'm... can you enable yours? We also don't hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Can you present? Yeah, yeah, I'm just presenting. Okay, thank you. Meanwhile, while Vasuda is getting ready, I posted the links in Piazza to the lecture, both on YouTube and in Google Drive. Yeah. We don't see at your screen, by the way. Okay, now we are seeing your screen. Excellent. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I haven't put it in slides. I just wrote it on a notepad. Excellent. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So. From section four point. Four point uh, two. Yeah. Four point two. Um, yeah. Which so problem? I'll be uh, starting with problem number nineteen. Nineteen. Um, yeah. yeah. So for all real numbers A and B, if A is less than B, then A is less than A plus B by two is less than B. So we'll be solving that first. So yeah, this is what, uh, I mean, okay. So the, we have found it to be true and to prove it, we know that A is less than B. Now by adding, a on both the sides, we get the next step where 2a is less than a plus b. And so by dividing both the sides by 2, you get a is less than a plus b by 2. Now you could do the same thing for the other inequality. So um, in which case you first start with a is less than b. And then you add b on both the sides. And you simplify it by a plus b is less than uh, 2b and then by dividing both the sides by 2 you get this now put together we um we get this so um two inequalities yeah two this inequalities done because we are multiplying with positive numbers uh, both inequalities and it keeps the same direction of greater than 
So this was yeah. supposed to be a hard problem. I mean, they said in the textbook that it's a hard problem, but it's not really. It's yeah. once you try it, you will see that it's very easy. Yes. Good. Let's see the, problem 27. Yes. So problem 27. It is a fact that if n is any non-negative integer, then this expression is true. So the question is asking if the right hand side of this equation is rational. If so, express it as a ratio of two integers here. Yes. So, so now um, we've been told that n is a non negative integer. And this means, um, okay, so this is the definition of a rational number. Sorry, I'll just write that down. Yeah, so um, since n is non-negative, 2 power n should also be an integer. So um, that holds because um, like um, when you multiply a number by um, another integer, it just gives you another integer. So um, when we like inductively prove it, you get 2 power n to also be an integer. So this is the expression. I think it's better done if I could just um, do it on paint. So let me write the expression down. Yeah. Um, can you look at everything? Yes, you did. So, yeah. So the what we were asked was one minus one by two power um, n plus one by one minus one by two. So uh, this uh, the numerator could be simplified as two power n plus one minus one by two power n plus one. And the denominator could be written as two minus one by two, which is which is this one by two. So okay. So basically this whole thing is to the power n plus one minus one divided by two. yes. So uh, so we have proved that this is a rational number. And we also expressed it as the ratio of two integers. Yes. So I've written it down here, but um, I think it, it's more, it's easier to look at it when, th that's why I had to use paint to show. Thank you. Written. Very good. Okay. Problem 33 is next. Problem 33, um, yeah. Let's take a look at the. When, yeah. When expressions of the form x minus r uh, x minus s are multiplied out, a quadratic polynomial is obtained. For instance, that expression. Yeah. Um, what can be said about the coefficients of the polynomial obtained by multiplying out x minus r and x minus s when both s and uh, r and s are all integers, when both are even integers, and when one of them is even and the other is odd? So, Yes. Basically, you have to do it by cases. When yes. they're both odd, what happens? When they're both even, what happens? And so on. Yes. So by multiplying these two, we obtain this expression. So um, x and x give you x squared. And um, x and the, the next terms would be r times x. Uh, and then minus s times x. So both of them could be put together. I'll just add that extra step in case it's not very clear. So we obtain this expression. So the coefficients that we're talking, we, we've been asked about in this pro, uh, problem 
r minus of um, r plus s and then rs and the other coefficient is one so we don't have to worry about that so the first case if both r and s are odd numbers so if both are odd numbers then we could um, express r as two times m plus one and um, s could be 2 times n plus 1. So uh, by adding r and s, uh, put we... s there because now. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. Confusing. Thank you. Yes. So by adding r and s, we obtain this, which is 2 times of m plus n plus 1, which will basically be an even number because it's 2 times some integer. And then um, we try to look at the product of R and S, and um, by simplifying them, we obtain an expression like this, which is again two times of some integer plus one, which is going to be an odd number. So we see that uh, the first coefficient should be even, and the second coefficient should be odd, if um, if we know that both R and S are going to be odd. The second case, let me just write that. Um, R is odd and S is even, or vice versa, because um, we, I mean, you could basically just flip R and S over here and you'll still end up with it, or it could be worked out separately. So um, in this case, R plus S would be 2M plus 1 plus 2N. Okay, in this case, let me um, write down what R and S are. R is 2M plus 1 and S is 2N. So when we write it down, we can simplify and obtain 2 of m plus 1 plus 1. So this should be an odd number. And r times s should be 2 times uh, m plus 1 multiplied by 2n. So that would give you something like this, which is again 2 times of some integer. So it gives you an even number. Now case 3, they both are even. So R can be 2 times N and S can be 2 times N. And then when we add R and S, we obtain um, 2, uh, 2 M plus 2 N, so 2 of M plus N. And so it's an even number. And R times S should be 2 M times 2 N. So 2 of twice 2 M N, so which is also an integer. So this should also give you an even number. Um, for the second part, I mean, it's uh, you can directly solve it now that we've um, solved A, B should be very simple. So in this expression, let me just write that. In this expression, both r plus s and r times s, if we, um, if r and s were to be two integers and we were to factorize it as x minus r times x minus x here, then we would need both r plus s and r minus s to be odd numbers. And in none of these three cases, we find that both r plus s not r minus s. I, did I say I'm sorry? Both r plus s and r times s should um, should be odd. So that's not the case in any of these three cases. So um, we can conclude that this cannot be written as a, a product of two polynomials with integer coefficients. Um, so we have proved that it's not possible. Excellent. Let's see if there are any questions. Yes, sorry, I have a question yeah. for problem 33a. Uh, when you are proving that R plus S is whether they are... You, you want to know if it's all, if you could already directly use a theorem that says that um, like multiplying two odd numbers or adding two odd numbers will give you such a result? Yeah, that's what I, uh, I want to ask. 
Uh, I think you can, um, Professor. Not sure. Can we directly use the theorem um, of like you know adding two odd numbers should yeah, give you an even number? Can we directly use? Yeah, that? because we covered it. Uh, it yeah. was one of the seven properties that we had at one yeah. point. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Any any other questions? Just one mention that uh, you chose this problem yourself, but actually one semester we this was in one of the exams. This was in the midterm, but it was completely yeah. random, coincidental. <laughs> okay, you can continue. Okay. Yeah, um, I think uh, Palak will continue. With 4.3? Yeah, I'll share my screen now. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Palak. I'll be doing it on Sublime Text. Uh, that's OK, right? Yeah, of course. But uh, share your screen first. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes. OK, uh, so I'll be doing exercise 4.3. This is based on divisibility. And I'll be doing problems 415 and 41. So uh, the question and answers both are written here. The, so the fourth question, it says, does 3 divide 3k plus 1 into 3k plus 2 into 3k plus 3? Here, uh, from the last term, you can take out 3. And that will make it 3 into the whole uh, this whole number, this whole part. I mean, okay, sorry, that is three, this whole part. So as three is outside, you can see that that number would divide by three. And because sums and products of integers are integers, this whole thing is an integer. Uh, that's the fourth question. Any questions? Okay, uh, I'll continue with the next question. This is the 15th question. It's a proof. And it says that for all integers a, b, and c, if a by b and uh, professor, I don't know how to say this. Do you say a by b, or do you say? I mean, do you say something else, professor? Okay. Uh, a divides. I think it's a divides b. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, so if a divides b and a divides c, then a divides b plus c. The proof is that since uh, a, uh, you have to suppose a, b, and c are integers, and a divides b and a divides c. So by the definition, you can say that b is equal to a into r, where r is an integer, and c is equal to a into s, uh, where s is an integer. This is by definition. It's given in the textbook. So now if you add b plus c, you'll get a r plus a s. And if you take a outside, you, you get a into r plus s. So if you assume r plus s is equal to t, here t is also an integer because the sum is an integer. So b plus c is equal to a into r plus s, which is equal to a into t. And by this definition, you can say that A divides B plus C. Yeah, this was the 15th question. And the next question is the 41st question. Here it says, uh, how many zeros are at the end of 458 into 885? And you have to find the answer without actually you know, multiplying the number. So what you do is you take this number and you find the factor, the prime factors of each. So you can see that 458 is equal to 3 power 2 into 5 and the whole thing power 8. We and are actually only looking at how many 5 and yes. how many 2 we have. Yeah, so once you find the prime factors for the entire number, you will be separating yeah, out the 5. That, and the that's two. the thing, that finding all the prime factors is a very is, hard problem. Okay, so fine, now then. the only thing that we need to do is to find uh, 
the two, number of what is the first number and the second one is five to the power what and then we yeah. can take the maximum such power to be how many tens you have there oh you'll take the minimum such power actually. minimum minimum yes yeah yeah so here you can see that this product has five power eight and two power 15 so you'll take um eight as the minimum and the number of zeros at the end will be eight now that's it anyone has any questions can you scroll down a little bit because uh, the last problem was not quite clear that's, okay. that's it. so the first number is five multiplied with three to the power two what, what exactly are you doing there i still don't get it this part yes this the, is I just like, the prime factors of yeah i think everybody is confused what you're doing there so this, let's let's okay. just take 458 divided by two until you cannot divide it anymore okay okay uh, because uh, it's a little bit confusing here Okay, so basically, if uh, I'll just just do it as I'm telling you, okay. four fifty eight divided by two. I just want to say, uh, for problem forty one, it's now four fifty eight. It's four uh, forty five to the power of eight. Uh, and uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, okay. So what? you copied it wrongly. Oh. Uh, can you go to the? Oh, it's 45 power 8 and 8. Sorry, I'm sorry. 88 to the power 5. I forgot. No, I think I copied it right. I forgot to add the... You did something very odd. Okay, so just delete the whole thing. And just... Uh, even the problem definition is wrong, no? Because you don't have the powers there. Uh, this... Oh, right. Okay. Okay, and there too. Okay, so now 45 divided by 5. 45 divided. divided by 5 is equal with 9. Okay, so there is a single 5. 5 divides 45, but uh, basically there are no more than 5. 9 is not divisible by 5. Okay, 88. Uh. 88 divided by 8. Okay. directly 8 is equal 11 okay so what what so, we know is that there is one at least one two in 88 basically but uh okay something is very odd here okay so why is it eight and not nine if 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 you don't mind me asking for, uh for 45 power eight. 5 is to the power 8. eight. I get it. Okay. So 5 to the power 8 because 5 okay. is the prime factor. Got so it. yeah. It. And 88 power 8 is equal to 11. So here 8 is 2 power 3. Yeah. So 88 power 5 will be 2 power 3 power 5, okay. which is 2 power 15. So, so uh, wait, I'll just write, uh, I'll write it down. Okay. If you Do the want. following. Do the following go to the original formula that you have in line 27 yeah at the end put an equal and now group them put uh five to the power eight multiply with two to the power eight multiplied with the rest of the factors okay three to the power 16 two to the power i don't know why did you get 15 it should probably have been uh is it's, it you, it's ah, 15. You broke, yeah, yeah yeah good so two it's power three power five so you yeah, multiply three and five yeah 16 and 11 mm. to the power five and now this yeah. is equal with 10 to the power eight yeah so this is part you group that into uh, ten, eight tens and the rest of them, which cannot give you 10 anymore because there are no powers of five. Yeah. So therefore the number of zeros is eight. Excellent, that's it, that's it. 
So once we copied it right, it's fine because really what it means is that uh, you can extract all the tense. Yeah, I made a mistake in the question. I That's mean, okay. I just forgot to put the power. Okay. Any questions from anyone? Okay, good. So okay. then, then uh, I'm still confused. Okay, so Alex, uh, 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 Palak, go back to oh, okay. show your screen. So Alex is still confused. So basically, 5 to the power 8 multiplied with 2 to the power 8 is 10 to the power 8. The rest of the factors do not contain 5. So if you multiply any a number which doesn't have uh, zeros afterwards with 10 to the power 8, you get that number followed by 8 zeros. And the question was, how many zeros are at the end of the product? If this makes it easier for you to understand. Yeah. So we took 45, we uh, create, we, comp we did the unique factorization of 45. Then we took uh, 88 and we did a unique factorization of 88. And then we raised them to, the, to their own powers, uh, to the power 8 and to the power 5. Then we did a unique factorization, so we put together the two numbers until we got only powers of 2, powers of 3, powers of 5, and powers of 11. And then we grouped together the powers of 2 and powers of eight, uh, 5, so we basically get the powers of 10 as separate from the rest of the other uh, powers of prime numbers. That tells us how many 10... 10 uh, uh, tens are in that product. The only way to obtain uh, zeros at the end of the integer. Okay. Also, there is a very nice explanation that Nelson gave on the chat. So if you, uh, Palak, if you move yeah. to the chat. Oh, uh, yeah, just a second you will basically see the explanations that Nelson gave that basically 45 to the power 8 can be written as that product and yeah. 8 to the power 5 as, as that product. Then you, are, uh, you get the factors of 2 and 5 together and you choose the minimum power. And there are 8 5s and 15 2s. You take that 8 out of the 15 twos and you make 8 tens, 8 fives, 8 twos in this product and you have 8 tens. So the only uh, zeros that you can have at the end of the integer are those that are uh, you multiply with 10. So we'll, you'll get 8 trailing zeros. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, oh okay. Alisa is asking, how do you get 5 to the power 8? Okay, so you had 45 to the power 8. 45 is uh, 3 multiplied with 3 multiplied with 5. And you distribute the power. So 45 to the power 8 is 3 to the power 8 multiplied with 3 to the power 8 multiplied with 5 to the power 8. Yep. So now you got in that product 5 to the power 8. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Should I stop sharing my screen? Mm, wait if there are more questions because basically now the students will go to work on their homeworks okay uh, for next week and uh unless there are more questions okay exactly alisa you're completely right 
anything that is not a five or a ten, we ignore them because they can't lead into uh, z trailing zeros. Okay. Yes. And we have more tools than we can need. Uh, I mean, we have the eight that we need, but then the rest cannot lead to uh, trailing zeros because we don't have any extra fives. Okay, then that's all for the recitation for today. Uh, we did a sample of each of these problems. We'll actually do a little bit more next time. So we cover exactly one hour. Today we finish a little bit earlier, but uh, that's fine because uh, you can work on your homework for the rest of the lecture today. So that's all for today. See you on Thursday, uh, unless you come to office hours tomorrow to see me or you come to, uh, to the student's office hours, to the TAs. Thank you very much. That's all. Or thing.